Welcome to Hypercar Global, the channel that focuses on Tesla, electric vehicles, and Elon Musk. Today we take a look at the megacast in Texas, the US renewable fuel credit market and the Model Y in China. Before we get into the video, if you enjoy please leave a like and if you are new please subscribe. Tesla Giga Texas Model Y front megacast is as intimidating as it is revolutionary. Tesla made waves a few months ago when it revealed that it was already utilizing single-piece megacasts for the Model Y's rear underbody. The innovation was evident with automotive veterans such as Sandy Monroe praising Tesla for its bold strategy. During that time, Tesla announced that its 6,000-ton Giga press machines could produce megacasts for the Model Y's rear underbody and front underbody as well. An image of the Model Y's front underbody megacast was recently shared online. The megacast is remarkable, both in its complexity and its daunting size. The photo was shared by Axel Turk, a die-casting specialist and managing director of Emil Turk GmbH and CKG. Turk congratulated Tesla's workers for successfully producing the massive casted part, which was the first of its kind. He added that the component was produced with an Idra machine. The accompanying photo of Turk's post shows several workers surrounding the front megacast. And while the executive did not specify which vehicle the component belonged to, its design, despite its surprisingly large size, was identical to the Model Y front megacast that Tesla featured in one of its battery day slides last year. The image also featured an Idris 6000 ton Giga Press in the background the machine that likely produced the part. In later replies, the die casting veteran mentioned that the image was from Texas, USA. A long time acquaintance in the industry sent the photo to him. The front megacast photo from Giga Texas seemed to excite the executive, who noted that such innovations would likely cause Germany's arrogant automobile builders with their bellies bloated by state aid are likely to descend from the high horse. Tesla's megacasts for the Model Y are revolutionary in the way that they simplify the vehicle production process. For example, the Model Y's rear underbody replaces 70 parts according to Tesla's CEO Elon Musk and veterans such as Sandy Monroe. This simplifies the all-electric crossovers production process, while optimizing costs. Tesla plans to enter U.S. renewable fuel credit market. The potential move could disrupt ethanol producers and anger those forced to buy the credits. According to a recent exclusive report by Reuters, Tesla has applied to enter the highly profitable renewable credit market in the U.S. The market is currently dominated by ethanol producers, but Tesla could stand to benefit from it in a major way. Of course, like most mainstream media reports about Tesla, the information comes from sources familiar with the matter, two unnamed sources, to be precise. If Tesla's application is a reality, and it's accepted by the Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, it could help the Biden administration move more quickly toward its zero emissions goals. The report goes on to say that Tesla is one of a total of eight or more companies that have submitted a related application to the EPA. Reuters says the Biden administration will review the credit applications and work to provide clarity about how electric cars could qualify for such tradable credits going forward. This all falls under the Renewable Fuel Standard, RFS which was first launched by the Bush administration to focus support on rural Americans and begin to reduce U.S. dependency on foreign oil. While details from the anonymous sources are slim, and even a bit confusing, Reuters says it learned that Tesla's application is potentially related to electricity production via biogas. If all goes as planned, Tesla could generate credits that trade at a much higher rate than current ethanol credits. Reuters says this could disrupt the rural ethanol business, which currently dominates the market, as well as, anger some in the U.S. refining industry who would need to buy the credits, known as RINs, generated by Tesla and other alternative fuel providers, essentially subsidizing an electric car company that seeks to put petrochemical refiners out of business. If Tesla moves forward with this path, there's a potential for other EV makers to benefit down the road, which would work to boost sustainable energy. In addition, it could bring more focus to have fast charging infrastructure. Meanwhile, it would work against the local refining industry. It will be interesting to see how this all plays out going forward. You'd better bet it will be another political nightmare with plenty of fighting and accusations from both sides of the aisle. However, as we move toward the future, 
it's arguably what needs to happen. Rather than subsidizing the refining industry, a plan like this would make the industry subsidize a future industry with the ultimate potential to put refining out of business. Do you think Tesla will move into this industry and dominate like it has done in the electric vehicle industry? Or will Tesla struggle and be left out? Let me know down in the comments your opinion. Tesla Model Y tops China's electric SUV segment despite April challenges. Tesla China had a challenging month in April, with drama ensuing in the Shanghai Auto Show due to a high-profile protest and the Model Y line being shut down for two weeks to make way for upgrades. Yet despite these headwinds, the Tesla Model Y still proved to be a formidable player in China's electric crossover market. Based on data from the China Automotive Technology and Research Center, Qatar, the locally produced Tesla Model Y was the country's top electric SUV in April 2021, with 5,520 units insured over the month. This was despite the supply of the Model Y being constricted due to the shutdown of its production lines at Gigafactory Shanghai. Interestingly enough, China's rankings for all electric SUVs hint at consumers' interest in vehicles that are created by companies that exclusively produce electric cars. Following the Tesla Model Y, for example, were the NIO ES6 and the NIO EC6, which had 3,302 and 2,484 insured units during the month. The Spang G3 also proved formidable, with 2,063 units insured in April 2021. In comparison, Vehicles from legacy automakers such Mercedes-Benz and Volkswagen exhibited far more conservative numbers last month in China. As per Qatar's data, only 744 units of the Mercedes-Benz EQC and 738 units of the Volkswagen ID.4X were insured last month. The Volkswagen ID.4 Cross, on the other hand, had 684 insured units. The all-electric crossover market has a lot of potential in China. This makes the Model Y an incredibly important vehicle for the domestic market. Hopefully, Tesla China's two-week shutdown in April pays off, and the Model Y could continue its quiet domination of the country's electric SUV segment in the coming months at a rate that's even more impressive than before. If Tesla is able to accomplish this, then the Model Y could very well become the backbone of the EV maker's sales in China. Let me know in the comments your opinion on Tesla and if they will keep dominating the Chinese market or if a competitor like NIO will try and take over? That's all for today. If you enjoyed the video please leave a like and if you are new to the channel please subscribe to help support and grow the channel. If you are new to subscribing, why not press the bell icon to receive notifications every time we upload. That way you will never miss a video and the latest news for Tesla and Elon Musk. Thanks for watching, until next time. Goodbye.